Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. This is part three, the third video in this series here. We're gonna look again at the magnetic moment, except this time we're gonna take a sphere that is uniformly charged. We're gonna spin it at some angular frequency, omega, and we're gonna calculate the magnetic moment produced by this spinning sphere, these spinning charges. Uh, this is almost identical to the shell and very similar to the disc. I'm gonna use the exact same approach. Okay, remember, if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. Uh, if you like what I do on my channel, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. I always get back to my students. Thanks for watching. All right, so we're going to proceed just like we did for the disc and the shell. Again, recall that we're going to look at a small com contribution to the magnetic moment. And we know for a small contribution, it's a small element of current and multiplied by the area. And the area will be uh, the area that's drawn out by a small amount of charge that we're going to look at. So let's just call this uppercase A. Now the direction of the magnetic moment, again, if I'm assuming that this charge here, this sphere, kind of rotates in this direction over here, to find the direction, you simply place your right hand in the direction of this omega, the direction of rotation, and your thumb should point up. So this here is the direction of the magnetic moment, so I'm going to call that the Z, Z direction. All right, so now all we have to do to find the magnitude, we simply have to look at these first two terms. How much current is produced by each individual charge in the sphere, and then what is the area, all right? Because depending if the small volume that I'm gonna look at of charge is closer to the axis or right out on the surface, it generates a different amount of current, and it produces a different area for that specific current loop. So now we're going to add them all up together. All right, so let's look at each term. Let's look first look at our area term. I'm going to consider a small infinitesimal volume over here. Again, this is, you work in spherical coordinates for this one. So the area that it draws out, imagine this little cube here, of yellow charge that's going to go around in a circle here. It is a certain distance L away from the axis of rotation. So therefore, the area that it kind of traces out is pi L squared. Now, if you want to rewrite that now in terms of its distance from the center using spherical coordinates, again, the angle uh, theta here is defined as this one with respect to the z-axis. Uh, so this is simply r sine theta. You square everything. So at the end, you get pi r squared sine theta, and that is also squared. All right, so that's the area of this little current loop that it's going to draw out. What else? Now we have to worry about the element of current. So the element of current produced by this small individual charge is going to be the magnitude of that small individual charge di divided by how long it takes for it to complete one turn. Again, if this object is rotating at some angular uh, velocity omega, um, that's related to uh, the period uh, two pi over t. You could substitute that in here. So what do we get? Uh, two pi divided by omega, and we still have our amount of charge here that's going around in a circle. So let's now find an expression for dq. Again, it's useful now just to introduce the volume charge density instead of the surface like we did for the shell. We're going to call that uh, the letter rho, and that's simply the total charge on the sphere divided by the total volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi a cube. Uh, A is the radius of my uh, sphere. Now the amount of charge, let's keep the factors here in the front, the amount of charge that we're going to get in that volume is simply equal to the density multiplied by the infinitesimal volume. I'll just write it like this, d tau. Now again, in spherical coordinates, uh, that infinitesimal volume is always the same. It's given by r squared sine theta. And now you can't forget all the other bits to it. And there's d theta, there's d phi, and then there's also this contribution, the thickness of that uh, small infinitesimal volume. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves in spherical coordinates, this is always the same. So now we simply have to put everything back into our magnetic moment equation, which is down over here. So let's go ahead and do that. And here I'm just worried about the magnitude. So let's recopy everything. The first is our elemental current produced by that moving charge. Uh, R squared sine theta. D theta, D phi. 
in dr that's the first part <clears throat> in the area that's what we have here at the top this is pi r squared sine squared theta all right now what we want to do now to calculate the total moment right the total magnitude of the moment what you have to do is you have to add up all the contributions from all the smaller elements something like this now when you integrate over the now the right hand side of this expression we have to integrate over the three variables right we have to integrate over theta we have to integrate over phi and we also have to integrate over uh, the distance so let's go ahead and do that we'll factor out all the constant terms also some things can cancel you can see this pi can cancel with that one uh, not much else can cancel so the constant terms you can pull them out of the integral so we're going to have omega we have the charge density we still have a two here in the denominator and i think that's all we have so we're going to integrate from zero to two pi uh, d phi there's no other terms involving the angle phi here so that's okay uh, we're also going to have an integral from zero to pi Again, this is just using standard uh, spherical coordinate systems here. Uh, so we integrate from 0 to pi for the angle theta. Um, and which terms do we have here? We have sine theta and we have sine squared. Actually, this term is exactly the same as we had for uh, the shell in my previous video. And the last term we have now, we're going to integrate the radius going from 0 all the way to the outside. And here we have r squared. We have another r squared here. We have r to the 4 and dr. All right, each of these terms can be evaluated kind of independent. Uh, this guy here gives me 2 pi. Uh, the next term, this integral we've seen before, same as the spherical shell. I'm not going to repeat it here. You could check that out with MATLAB or with any other tool you want to use. You can do it by hand using an integral table. This gives me 4 over 3. And the last term is also pretty straightforward. After you substitute the limits here, you should get a to the fifth power divided by 5. All right, so now we're going to put everything back together. So we have our magnetic moment is omega rho. All right, we're going to have 2 pi from this integral. That 2 is basically going to cancel with this one. But you're still going to have a pi left over. So let's go ahead and do that. We still have this. We're going to have our factor of 4 over 3. Comes from the integral of the angle theta. And then at the end we have a to the fifth power divided by 5. All right, one thing you can do now, as I did in all the previous cases, this is the answer. Uh, however, you can write it in terms of the total charge instead of having the charge density, which is often what is done. So if you do that, actually, you're going to see you have a 4 thirds factor that comes in here. And that's actually going to cancel with this 4 thirds factor. But let's go ahead and do that. So what you get is omega. Now let's substitute our charge density, which is Q, uh, divided by 4 thirds pi A cube. Here you have 4 thirds. And here we have A to the 5 divided by 5. All right, now just be careful when you cancel out the terms. So this guy here is going to eliminate with this one. Oh, I forgot a pi factor that I still had over here. And that one doesn't matter also because it's also going to cancel with this term. See, I have uh, a to the third power in the denominator here. I can get rid of three of those, and I'm still left with two in the top. So my final expression now, all right, and there's nothing that's going to cancel out that five. So I'm going to have one over five. Um, I'm going to have the total charge Q. I still have the omega. And now I'm going to have the radius of that sphere squared. All right, so there's the final answer here for uh, the magnetic moment produced by a rotating sphere. It's one-fifth uh, QWA uh, A squared. It's kind of interesting. If you go back and look at the other videos, actually the spinning shell was one-third. And if you go back to the disc, uh, the disc was one fourth. So actually, you do all that work, and really all you end up <laughs> changing for all those three different cases are uh, this factor in the front. All right, anyway, there you have it, folks.
I hope you understood this video. If you have any questions, again, don't forget to leave them in the comment section.